Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Once Upon a Witchlight. We would absolutely love it if you could like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check that bell so you never miss an episode. Instead of quotes today, I'd like to take the opportunity to tell you about the biggest project we here at Avantris have ever endeavored to launch. We are launching our very first Kickstarter on October 3rd, and with it, the publishing wing of Avantris. It's a folk horror 5th edition supplement called The Crooked Moon. Along with this supplement, we're offering a full adventure for parties level 1 to 13, 13 new subclasses, 13 new races, 11 massive, highly detailed boss miniatures, 65 folkloric monsters, 39 new spells, 13 sets of custom dice, a beautifully illustrated 78 card tarot deck, mm -hmm. and music by The Blasting Company, the composers of the beloved cartoon Over the Garden Wall. So many of you have shown unbelievable amounts of support during our pre-launch. We are extremely excited to finally be sharing our dream products with all of you. Be sure to check out thecrookedmoon.com today to learn more about the tiers, offerings, and stretch goals. Because of all of you, we have the greatest community out there. Thank you. Hungry woods reaching high Snatch the light out from the sky Leafy sighs, creaking bones Pray you don't get found alone Crickly crack the branches pop it grows the night that never stops The tree that leans with twisted grin Her limbs are thrown, her soul is sin Underneath the crooked moon Stalks the king of cloven hoof In pale decay and empty gloom He comes for you Heat is cold. He carries six of sword and seal. Once wayward souls the fall and kneel. Kremi, you are staring out at, to what most people would look like the most beautiful white mare you'd, they'd ever seen in their entire lives. <laughs> but you recognize immediately this being, this creature, for what it truly is, a unicorn. You've seen them before in depictions, in paintings, in art in stuffed toys and carnival games. But to see a unicorn in the flesh is unlike anything you could have ever expected. A feeling of calm radiates over and through all of you. Almost as if the unicorn has an- <laughs> What? <laughs> 
What the fuck? <laughs> What's going on here? Someone said the unicorn kills Ross and sets him on fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually That's true. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're supposed to be professional, damn it! That's your fault! I can't work like this, Rich! Oh no, my pancreas! <laughs> <laughs> The Lord went up under my ribs, punctured my lungs. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. 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 Uh, oh. I don't know which one of you said that, but you're in trouble. <laughs> I, I like, didn't even see it. I just it was in the corner of my eye. <laughs> I would like to now. see you in my office after uh, the stream. Oh, they're all calling out Lexi. Killed uh, the, oh, I'm okay. killed and then set on fire. <laughs> <laughs> the unicorn stands up, takes off its hooves, yes! uh, and their little hands, and dumps gasoline all over his body. <laughs> That's still one of the most <laughs> scarring moments of any cartoon. Yeah. Ever. What was that, Adventure Time? Yeah. Yeah. Deer. God. God, that was funny. <sighs> okay. <sighs> You're doing great. That was a very beautiful I'm one. so Thanks. sorry. Thanks. <laughs> a very beautiful description. And I don't even know how to start it again. You know what? You're in front of a unicorn, and she's just said what she said to you. Go for it. No, oh, no. It's okay. It's okay. We're not going to hurt you. You all right? The last word she said to you is that she, her partner, she believes has been killed and she is the last one left. The last one? Fellas, did you hear her speak? Yeah, everybody heard her. Oh, Mr. Crammy, she's beautiful. <coughs> oh. I have like tears in my eyes. I'm just like. I'll reach in my filthy sack and give you a disgusting rag to like blot your eyes. <laughs> it's okay. Everyone cries. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. well, my own hand. It's, <laughs> it's okay, Crummy. Everyone gets pink eyes. <laughs> you are not still wearing the horn on your head. I'm assuming you. No, 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 no. I have that inside. Maybe she's riled up. Does she look like anxious? She. She doesn't move the way you would look a you would the way you would imagine a skittish beast to look. Her eyes do not do not dart this way or that. You don't see her ears perking up. She stands as if she has not a care in the world. Roll an insight check. Oh. Fifteen. However, or more than that. It is in her eyes that you can see that she is nervous. And though she stands in front of you with all of the confidence that a unicorn can muster, there is a part of her that is afraid. And it is in the way that the lights hit her eyes, these beautiful, deep, lavender eyes that sparkle in the light, that you see that her eyes are moving, scanning the horizon behind you, checking for anyone that could be, that would dare to trespass on this meeting between all of you. And you imagine that at the slightest hint of danger that she would bolt into the tree line and that there would be no catching her. All right, Rico. I need you to play me some late 70s, early 80s Americana folk rock, all right? Don't make me put that song on, I'll do it. <laughs> boo, 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 boo. <laughs> boo, boo, boo. <laughs> boo, boo, boo. Not what I was thinking, but. Boo, boo, boo. When the last eagle flies <laughs> over the last crumbling mountain. And I'm like slowly approaching. <laughs> when the last light <coughs> roars. Torbeck is stunned at this, at this incredible yeah, performance. At the last <laughs> dusty fountain. And I'm like, I'm just going to continue to sing as I like approach I'm, her. I'm surprised that you remember lyrics from that song. 
It's a fucking banger. It's a <laughs> banger. I mean, come on, holy shit. And I'm as I approach her, if she would let me. Are you singing as you approach yeah, her? Yeah, I'm Are singing. Doing yeah, that? and I sing the rest of the lyrics too. I don't know them all. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> um, the internet at your fingertips, and you don't know the lyrics. I will continue to sing the theme song to the Last Unicorn by America. <laughs> and, <laughs> And uh, when Great I'm bitch. close, yeah. just try to like brush her mane and and knowing that she she'll bolt and that if she bolts and that she's gone, I just want to be feel seem friendly Roll and an animal gentle. Handling check. Oh God! Since Greco's helping me, can you, can you, straight. Um, I guess. Uh, oh! Oh! Uh, oh! Wow! That's nice. Good. good roll. You sing this song and. Though it is not the most beautiful song that anyone has ever sung. No, 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 it ain't. Says you. There is heart to it. The love of unicorns that you were cursed with at the witch-like carnival didn't end upon leaving the carnival itself. Mm. Whether it was something that had been there all along, or whether it still lingers is hard to tell, but you you feel for this creature. Your love for this creature is real. And she can sense that. And her fear ebbs. As you reach your hand up to touch her, however, she backs up and shakes her mane. Beautiful, um, <sighs> pearlescent white oh, okay. um, curls almost float in the air as she shakes her head and she she looks towards you, denying you any kind of physical contact with her. I, I am the last. What brings you here? Well, my name is What Pre do you want of me? My name is Premi Lecru, and uh, this is Carnival Lecru, and I'll gesture to them in the back there. <clears throat> Well, hello. You are not playing Frost. <laughs> Can you please, for the remainder of this session, forget that Frost exists? Who's <laughs> Frost? Oh, beans on toast for breakfast. I'll be right back. <laughs> hello, I'm gonna go now. <laughs> hey there. Look, we're just trying to make our way through the Feywild, and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm just a, a big personal fan of, 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 of unicorns. You, sh you sure you're the last? I have seen no others. I would feel them, and I can't. Ever since my love was taken from me, I felt him for a long while. He... We were connected, but it has gone dark. It's been too long, and it has gone dark. Well, I'm awfully sorry to hear that. Um, the reason I think you might not be the last is, uh, just brace yourself, and I'm gonna reach into my jacket and pull out the horn. Does this... You don't even get a moment to say a word as she rears back on her hind legs and lets out a noise that is unlike any sound you've ever heard before. And all of you feel as if you're experiencing heartbreak for the first time. The sound is one of the most sorrowful noises that you've ever heard as she rears back and she shakes her mane and then you watch as this beautiful creature, this lithe and graceful creature crumbles to the ground and you watch as you see a unicorn cry. Silvery, sparkling tears drip from her face and create a pool in the grass as she sobs. No, 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 I'm, I'm so sorry, no. The reason, I, the reason I'm asking you, the reason why I'm showing you this is, I don't know how I know, but the unicorn whose horn this is, I believe, is still alive. <clears throat> she quiets as she looks up towards you. You watch as she attempts to 
regain her composure and get back to her feet, but her legs buckle beneath her as she once again crumbles to the ground. But she lifts her head. That horn belongs to my love. It was stolen from him. It was stolen <coughs> from him the day I lost him. How could you know if he's alive? You simply have what they took. What they stole to do all of this to Prismere. No, 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 look, look. I, I know it sounds crazy, but I stole this back. And I don't know if who I stole it from was the one that took it, but when I touched when I touched it for the first time, I I got visions of a unicorn with the horn removed. Trapped on an island just like this. But there were storm clouds and and he was almost like in a cage. You saw Elidon. You saw him. What did he look like? Well, like me. I think it was. Larger still. And, and Taller. He, yeah, yeah. He was he was bigger than you are and, and a little stockier, but anyway, I, you may not be the last, and I can't guarantee he's still alive, but. I swear to you that I'm going to find him and I'm going to reunite him with this horn. Roll a persuasion check at advantage. That's where I'm a Viking. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to roll dice. No, I don't say that. I mean, 24. <laughs> you watch as she slowly, shakily rises back um, to a standing position. She shakes out her mane and her tail, and you feel as one of her tears lands on your lapel, and it sparkles. You immediately, as it begins to evaporate, you smell um, the scent of summer rain and the, um, the, f the smell of fresh grass and flowers blooming for just a moment before it fades away into the wind. She looks towards you. She eyes all of you suspiciously at first, but then you watch as her face softens. You are welcome here, but I would ask that you tell me everything you know. I will tell you what I know and help in any way that I can. If you promise that you will try to bring Elidon back to me, if what you say is true, I cannot leave this island, but I will do everything in my power to help you with the knowledge that I have and the guidance I can give and with the magics that I possess. For I would do anything to see him again. So you're stuck on this island too? <laughs> on my own accord. For if I am the last, then everything about me has value. And there are many, and she looks behind you, that seek me to this day. For that horn was stolen for a purpose. What has befallen Prismere could not have happened had it not been for that horn. And mine holds a similar power. Follow me into the tree line. We will rest. Absolutely. Fellas? Yeah, we're very tired. <clears throat> We've been rolling around being haunted by ghosts for many hours, <laughs> or perhaps days. Uh, she leads you into the tree line and to what is a beautiful grove with a large overgrown uh, bit of, uh, of ruin. What the building had been in previous times, it is, uh, it is too dilapidated to tell. It is overgrown with moss and vine and branch and thorn. But it is beautiful. Everything in this forest looks as if it is eternally spring here. It looks verdant <clears throat> and healthy. The smells are unlike anything you've ever smelled before. So sweet. And there is a sense of relaxation and calm that comes over you as you find your way to this unicorn's home. And it is not a home as you would have expect it to be, but just this open glade surrounded by the stone ruins. 
and a soft patch of grass and flowers that clearly she sleeps upon night in and night out. But you are able to pull up stumps and find um, a few moderately sized toadstools that carry your weight and you're able to sit down and <coughs> she allows you to build a fire and to set up a makeshift camp in this spot. And you take an hour, maybe, almost in silence, all watching each other, getting used to movements and um, how to interact before you're finally settled and ready to talk to this creature. She makes no movements to start the conversation herself, but waits for you to feel ready to talk about your journey, what's expected, whatever it is that you feel inclined to speak with her about. All right, fellas, don't say anything too, you know, scary, spooky, fucked up. <clears throat> She's clearly had a rough time of it, all right? Yeah, man, it, you know, it sucks that she's in some kind of self-imposed isolation. I kind of thought she'd come on, like, a vengeance quest with us and you'd get a super cool unicorn steed. Oh, yeah. Could you imagine? Oh, my God. You <laughs> riding around shooting voodoo bolts and just stabbing people? Oh, Damn, it would have been cool. Gideon, that's a good point. I mean, people are after Torbeck and want to rip Torbeck's guts out. If people want to take the unicorn's guts, maybe the unicorn can go crazy like Torbeck does. Oh, man. And wear a yellow jumpsuit, and we can all walk in slow motion and go, burr, burr, burr. You know what I mean? Yeah. That does sound mm. really cool. That sounds oh, man. Cool. Yeah. But look, she's not a beast of burden, all right? She's a, you know, she's a sentient creature. She's more powerful than probably all of us put together. But that being said, let's say I ride her into battle and I show up at the hag's door and, you know, she gets, she she would probably have more use for the unicorn than just about anybody else in the Feywild. Uh, does that mean that Torbeck is also not a beast of burden? <laughs> I mean, I never said you were, technically. <laughs> oh, that sounds technically correct, but Torbeck doesn't necessarily believe it. Uh, look, look. You also never said that he wasn't. What I'm trying to say about, and I should really get a name. I'm thinking maybe Mia. Her name might be Mia. I think that's a pretty name for a unicorn. Name. You, her name is Lamorna. You were told Lamorna. this already. Oh, well. I just figured if I ever met a unicorn, her name would be Mia. Anyway. You can't just name a sentient person. <laughs> oh, I guess you're right. She's he, not a horse. He's not a horse. <laughs> I've just been thinking about this all wrong. <laughs> Mr. Grimmie She's tried a person. to change Torbeck's name like eight times. <laughs> so, well, you know. Trying to change the name and just forgetting it are two different things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess. <laughs> Although if it was one syllable, that would be a lot easier to say. Like, why couldn't you just settle for Steve or something? You know what I mean? Jim? Those are boring names. <laughs> Torbeck likes Torbeck. Yeah, everyone f thinks my name is Greg. Oh. And Grinko. Well, that's what I was going to say. Whoa. I feel like every, everywhere we go, at least when we have the carnival, people are calling you Grinko. <laughs> Yeah. It's like your name's fucking spelled on the marquee. I don't, you know. I know. <laughs> there's no N. Just like there's no, there's no D in the Ventress. Gringo's kind of cool, though. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I think Gringo's very nice. We might name me. Oh. She's the smallest person I know. No, no, no. Gringo's great. Torbeck is saying that Gringo is kind of cool. <laughs> Ah, uh, I sound like I'm gonna have really overpriced copying services. Oh, I was just gonna say that. She's <laughs> gonna be pretty fast Damn to get one on over on Little Green, Big Red. <laughs> Torbeck was gonna make a ginkgo below budget. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the meaning of the word. Uh, neither does Torbeck. Maybe that's why they keep fucking it up, because you little green co. They're combining Little Green and Grinko. Grinko. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, man. Oh, no. I'm about to have an identity crisis, guys. <laughs> Get it, why? We all need to calm down from that heartbreak. Pootsie, let's all group hug and snuggle. 
What the fuck are we doing? Frosty, stop talking. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Frosty. <laughs> we're having a moment here. We're group hugging. Uh, uh, oh, just, it's like I experienced my first heartbreak. Oh, yeah, you got to be careful with that horn, uh, man. Especially if what she's saying uh, is true and it's, it's got some kind of crazy powers that did all, all of something to Prismere. I mean, we start busting in the hags' huts, waving that around. They're gonna be more interested in that than they are dealing with us. Yeah, I don't know why I pulled it out, but it just—I don't know. It felt like she'd somehow believe me more easily if I showed her that I had it than if I just tried to convince her otherwise. But um, you know, hopefully she has some faith in what I'm telling her, because I swear to y'all, I—I I, I saw it. I saw another unicorn that just looked looked just like her and. On an island not too dissimilar from this. Was that like the same kind of vision where I saw that Seda? Yeah, kind of. Uh. It was like a weird <laughs> magical trip, sort of. Who was like naked? But here's the thing. I think the King of Hearts was the one that cut it off. What? Yeah, at least that, that's sort of what I put together. And the way that the blade sort of, and I, I'll pull out the horn, you know. If you kind of look here, it's sort of the same kind of... Knife that uh you know took old Miss Potts' wings off. Potts' wings off. <gasps> Wait a second. Oh, I'm putting something together, but it's not. Uh, uh, <laughs> are you telling me? <laughs> are you implying? Come that on. Was. That it was the same type of knife. That they yeah, 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 we've talked about this. They shop at the same cutlery store. Oh, there's a cereal harvester <laughs> running around. I think he probably used this for some kind of magical spell or something and just didn't need it anymore. Maybe it was stolen from him, but I don't want to fucking ask. And we're sure it's the king? I mean, I felt like I was seeing through his eyes. Oh, that's so right. unfortunate. Yeah. What would he be doing, stealing unicorn horns and and fairy wings? And what's it? What the? What the hell? I don't. He's collecting bits and pieces. And did he do all this? I mean, I thought I thought he's trying to undo all this. Well, we did discuss that maybe it was like a you know like a false memory, an image, and. Some other being out there, maybe that fucking ugly hag with the with oh the yeah, metal yeah the ugly hag. Didn't maybe she's him. trying to you know turn us against him. What had the jabber walk kill all of us? Yeah. Either way, I mean, I think she deserves to <sighs> hear what we know, and I think we need to tell her what you know. Uh, I don't know if we tell her a full plan or if we let slip that it was the King of Hearts, maybe? She might not even know who the guy is. Uh, Torbeck can't help but think that we're all just pawns on the chessboard of life. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, just came to Torbeck all of a sudden. Torbeck doesn't even know what half those words mean. <laughs> I was going to say, that's a nonsensical <laughs> metaphor. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, that... Or was it metaphor? All right, let's go. Okay, we are feeling less heartbreaky. I'm feeling okay. I think so. Yeah. Oh, Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> you do the talk. I'll, uh, I'll... We will approach. You're all in the same glade. It's very small. She's oh. probably been listening to everything that you've been saying. Uh. No, she she appreciates and understands privacy. It's very clear that she allowed you your moments to talk and that she's choosing to trust you. And she waits until you make your way closer to her um, before her ears perk up and she looks towards you, awaiting whatever information you have to bring her. All right, so... Uh... What can I do to help you? You can find my love. You asked for information, and pretty much what I know. Well, I asked for you to find my love. I provide, I offered to provide information. 
to help you. I can't, I cannot provide assistance physically, mm-hmm. but I can provide knowledge. And there may be a few other things, depending on your hearts and whether they are pure. <coughs> oh, well. <laughs> I'm, sure. Sure. Um, <laughs> I'm sure we'll pass that test. That's a prerequisite. Torbeck's oh. <laughs> oh, heart is like his filthy sack. Torbeck <laughs> is doomed. No, no. Like, how pure is pure? You, you, you know, misunder- like opaque? You misunderstand. I am not concerned what laws you've broken, what <gasps> sins you have committed. Oh. <sighs> All I care for is your trustworthiness in this situation. What, what, what about um, like accidental murder, but like still so such reckless disregard for life that you could really classify it as heinous uh, misconduct and technically murder? Well, hang on, man. That was like five or six times, okay? <laughs> that barely meets the... I don't think she's thinking about that. I'm just Quit like, asking I'm clarifying looking, I'm questions, all right? You, I'm looking oh, out for you, Big on. Red. Yeah, well, so what he said. Evil is innate in this world. It is natural, just as good. Where you find one, you will find the other. Mistakes. It takes a long life, a unicorn's life, to understand truly the difference between right and wrong. Morality is in, morality belongs to each individual on its own. I will never choose I, you will never be able to understand how I view the world, for you do not see through the eyes of a unicorn. Oh, and I will never I be know. able to understand why you choose to do the things you do, for I can never see the eyes through the eyes of man. Uh, I am not here to judge, but from you I ask one thing, to bring my Elidon home. And I if will. your heart is pure, and you can make this promise to me, and I believe that you are true in your words, I will help you on your way. Well, because in doing so, I believe you can you can free Prismir from its curse. Your past transgressions aside, it is what you choose to do with your future that matters. Well, that's what I was getting at, is that's exactly what we aim to do. We want to free, oh, I don't know, help Zabilna return and be the, you know, queen of Prismere, whatever she is, whatever she is in the pecking order. But regardless, we want to help her. We're helping out the King of Hearts. And as I say that, I just want to sort of see if she, like, changes. She doesn't seem to... She doesn't seem, not that there's no recognition necessarily, but that the mentioning of the name doesn't seem to affect her negatively in any way. Um, and we're trying to take care of these fucking hags. Excuse the French. Please watch your language in my glade. I'm sorry. Unless, of course, you got 100,000 gold pieces for like, us bringing back Elodin, then, you know, like, we're cool with that. You silly, silly, silly man. A unicorn does not barter in gold Uh, or material possessions. I have no use for gold. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. What is what is gold? I don't know. Hell, and then cursed all the prismier or something. You think they might have a hundred thousand gold lying around? What if you could get into like club and just push it around with hooves or something? Oh, I thought they were going to take their gloves. That's not how hooves work, idiot. That's not how hooves work. That's disgusting. Oh, my God. That's disturbing. I don't know, man. I just thought she was like a crazy, powerful, magical creature. I am. (laughs) Oh, okay. Yeah, well. My bad, everybody. Jeez. She's above such mortal desires. Please forgive us. I know you can't comprehend the mind of a man. He's half man. 
None of us are, though. We're cool. Like, we're... Tormek is 0% bad. Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're 100% goblin studs, you know what I mean? Tormek. <laughs> she watches you, um, not necessarily interested, but as if she's watching a, a creature out of space. Uh, some sort of entity that she is is wholly foreign to her. Um, and she watches quietly. She seems neither amused nor um, disturbed by the things that you're doing. But all that to say, he's cool. He's with us. He's also have Genie, which is pretty cool, too, you know? That yeah. is pretty cool. Huh? That's yeah. pretty cool, yeah. I like Do the it. thing. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> He James Woods is. <laughs> yeah, James Woods. I just the reference. She once again watches you, but she does not startle. She cool, does not huh? seem impressed. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> yeah. You like that? <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Uh, how about this? <laughs> you are impressed by your primal nature. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. no, you're impressed by my primal nature. I'm. Impressed, not at all. Dang. Well, you don't have to be impressed. It's you know, it's cool, but it's not that cool. I totally get yeah, it. It's pretty well, it's quite cool, hot, man. actually. Yeah. Thank you. I think it's more like it. Don't, don't overheat the unicorn. <sighs> cool. Look, I'll make any fate pack you want. I will do what I can to help Elodin. I am not looking Elodin. for a fate pack. I am a unicorn. I am not a creature of the fae. I do not deal in mind games and trickery. She's a celestial. Uh, how do you look into our hearts? What's that process like? I've been doing so since we first started speaking. Oh, oh no. She's gosh. like an angel, basically. Oh, oh, this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, hopefully you can sense that my intentions are true. I mean what I say, and I plan to do what I can. And so whatever you need to be able to help us, we'll take all the help we can it get. It is a promise, then, that you will venture to wherever you believe Elidon is being held captive. You will reunite him with his horn, and I will ask you one thing further, that you will do everything in your power to return him to my glade, where he will be safe that's a good question. Do I know, thinking back to what I saw, do I have any sense of where it might be? You, there were things about it that led you to believe it was in Yawn. Um, I promise. I promise I will do everything you just said, and based on what I saw, I think he might be in Yawn. We're going there anyway after we take care of, after, come on. Take care of We what? practice this. Take care of what? After we take care of. Take care of what? Say the name, the name bad. What name? Bad. Say the name. What has? What has? I can't believe this. Who's it's like his favorite thing in the world. What are you talking about? This is where you bring the passion, man. This is where you bring your heat. Bavlona? No. Oh. Blightstrom? Ah, oh, Scabify. Why would you do this? Be more specific. <laughs> oh, my God. Look. We're gonna go deal with her. Scabify. There's something we need from her. Uh, it's part of our grand quest that we're on. Uh, this is just, you know, a little piece of it. Uh, but then Yon is our next stop. And what do you know of what has happened to Prismere? You dally with the hags that have caused all of this. Do you know the game they have played? Do you know the wrong that they have done? We know. Do you know the catalyst that started everything? We've put some clues together, what but... What do you know? Uh, well, maybe like 25% <laughs> of the story. Oh, no. We're getting in bits and pieces. Who wants to summarize? Well, we know that they like to play with dolls, so that's about uh, as far as we got in the like game. Like the one you have strapped to your back? Yeah, she's not really a doll. No, she's like she's a, not. Yeah, she's a, she's a bog. 
She's a bog beast. What is she? What's twigs? A bogger. She's a bogger. Well, no, yeah. she's, a, she's a brownie. She's, she's not a she, but sometimes too. she's a bogger. She can transform, or like if she gets too worked mm. up, she's like. Hey, yeah. Oh, she also does James Woods. Uh, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. also yeah. Point of saying view. I'm gonna bog her down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you gotta look out uh, for her. We also oh, know man. that they uh, got like reborn in a cauldron mm. after committing. So you know of the cauldron then? What? Yeah, we've been in neck bats. Well, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's take a step back. I will run you through what we know. Uh, we know that Zabilna uh, is a powerful archfey, and uh, the man that we are working for that sent us on this quest, uh, he's a warlock, and his patron is Zabilna, and he lost contact with her, and she is trapped, or asleep, or dead. Oh, or... and Kettlestein! <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. Don't forget Kettlestein. Yeah, and Twig. I mean, all of them are, you know. But we don't know Twig's patron, do we? Well, she was in the pit in the portrait. I just oh, assumed. You're right. right. Twig never told you who her patron was. Oh. Well, I was just assuming that. Maybe oh, that it, joke's on me. You have, you have mentioned that Zabilna was her patron around her, and she didn't say it wasn't. But she's never oh. told you who her patron was. So anyway, we know that something happened, and she Ooh. was usurped by her three older sisters, as far as we know, uh, the three hags. Uh, and she's the little sister. Uh, we know that there's a bigger hag uh, with big metal teeth, and mm, that mm-hmm. when Zabilna presumably was young, she was kept in a towel for some reason. Uh, we know that she was kept away from the prince for some okay. reason. Yeah, yeah. Um, we know that there's a horrible Elden Beast of Viridian Scale oh, that can murder. very easily uh, oh, rip yeah. us limb from limb. We saw it happen. I, we felt it happen. Yeah, that wasn't very. You have fun. encountered the Chabawalk. for a very brief period of time. Yeah, the jaws that bought, the claws that catch. It you showed must, up and then it was over. We you didn't must bluff away. be careful. All right. The Chabawalk is relentless. If it has caught your scent. It will hunt you until you are gone. Oh, my oh God. man. Oh. Do not cross it. Whatever you do, make no, no, sure no. it does not see you, it does not smell you, it does not hear you. For once it does, your time is running short. Well, that's another thing. <laughs> Speaking of time, um, we were set on a quest by the King of Hearts to uh, resolve the Zabilna situation. Uh, he's looking for a trinket, or a curio, you could say, from each of the hags. Uh, we theorizing. Where, where does this King of Hearts rule? Uh, under, oh, underground? Do we know? Underground? I don't We're know. not very sure. <laughs> I, I mean, he turned into an owl. You think he rules underground? He's like flying around as an owl. What would an owl have to do underground? Uh, also uh, kind of unclear, uh, there have been several visions that we've all shared and had individually that don't really mean much to us. Oh, he and talks to us on these things. She looks at the pawn and there's no recognition that crosses her face. Uh, well, like the Summer Queen, my guess is he rules... Feywild proper. What domain, I do not know. For my life has been spent here in Prismere. So what you're saying is that you don't think he has anything to do with Prismere. He's from outside in the regular Feywild. There is only one ruler of Prismere. And that is Sibilna. So look, we've gotten a lot of fucking allegorical, metaphorical, you know, uh, timey-wimey visions and... Phantasmagorical. And, uh, phantasmagorical, <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, right. You know, there's yeah, something... Like that a theater mind, huh? <laughs> Animal-headed people on fucking horses. We know that the hags used to be really fucked up pieces of shit and did some heinous crap. I asked you yep. to watch your language. I apologize, oh, yeah. you're right. 
Yeah. Is there a swear jar? Or or Aunt Whammy <laughs> there, Mr. Grammy. <laughs> Let's try to take our foot off the gas. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, it just comes out oh, of Oh, they were once also of the race of man as well, mm-hmm. I believe. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. that's true. We learned. And, uh, yeah, they did a lot of murdering, and then uh, I guess they were turned into soup. And <laughs> that's cons- what the soup was consumed. Right? Oh, yeah. And uh, then they turned into horrible hags. So, you know this cauldron, then? I know of it in whispers. I know of it in tales. I know of it in the stories the butterflies bring to my my grove. Mm. It is a cauldron of immeasurable age. Ancient and powerful. Longing to, well, the owner is unimportant. Does the owner have metal teeth, by chance? Then you know of her. We've seen visions. I think we stumbled into one of her hourglasses. She was giant! She looks confused, but... Yeah, me too. Shakes her head. (laughs) The cauldron was not given willingly. It was stolen. At least that's what the stories tell. Those are the words the butterflies sing. But we move too quickly. We must start the beginning. The domain of Prismere was once ruled by Zabilna. She ruled fairly from the castle of the Palace of Heart's Desire and was usurped by her cruel sisters, the three hags that you know of. Yep. Those of Bilna was vainglorious and deceitful at times. Her magic is what kept Prismere safe and isolated from from the rest of the Feywild. Okay. Will you please stop it? No, so what? You don't need to say that. He thinks he's active listening. He doesn't realize it's very he's doing distracting. It. <laughs> okay. For all people involved. Okay. You're doing it still. What? I'm doing what? You keep saying okay. Oh, just, okay. Just don't make sound out of your mouth. <laughs> he doesn't even hear that he's doing it. We're so sorry. <laughs> Where was I? <clears throat> I didn't even know a unicorn could get distracted, and then you show uh, up. Uh, Jabilna's magic uh, was the only thing what kept it separated oh. from uh, the yes. Feywild. I said active problem. listening. Thank Get on you. you. <laughs> I'll, I'll learn from the best. Learn from me, Mum. <laughs> now, Zabilna's palace is a place of wonder. Anyone that was looking for... Well, their heart's desire could travel there and beseech Sibylna to make their wildest dreams come true. And she would. She would help them. Now, they were only able to access her palace by invitation. Though, with the hag's magic being what it is, I don't know if those rules still apply. Regardless, when they realized they wanted Prismere for their own, for what purpose, I'm not, I'm not quite sure, and the butterflies do not tell. They utilized the stolen cauldron of ancient magics and the unicorn horn that you now hold in your hand to put the palace of Heart's Desire in a time stop. Everything within, everything but the Jabberwock which cannot be controlled is frozen in time. I do believe that undoing this magic will take quite a few powerful magical artifacts. One, you will have to fell the foul beast that guards the castle, the Jabberwock. And there is only one thing that can stop it. The Blade Key. What? No. Oh, man. Uh, I the, thought you had it. The, I had it right here, but yeah. The Vorpal Sword. 
But it has been lost to time. That was and, close. Ah, dang. and none that I'm aware still know of its location. It may not even be in Prismere any longer, and if it's not, then we are lost. But you have something in your possession. That horn. Why do you keep raising that stone key of... A blades. I'm sorry? It's a blade key. It's a stone key of blades. It's, no, it's a, it's a stone key of absolutely no value. <laughs> well, I mean, this thing's killed a jabber walk once or twice in its day. You well, just got a galump right afterwards, and then it's totally fine. There's a, oh, oh, are you a bard? Are you telling telling a, a, a story, weaving a tale? Bard? No. You should take one look at me. I got fluffy pantaloons and a ridiculous <laughs> instrument I strum around with. A crazy hat? Well, then why are no. you... No! Why are you telling lies? You see this beard? Bard. Yeah. Can you believe this? Does he look like the kind of guy who would try to, like, seduce every magical creature we oh, meet yeah. in the Feywild? Oh, and, oh, oh wait. Can Bard yeah. not have beards? No! No, definitely no. not. Torvik is very wait. certain he's heard a story from a man with a beard and fluffy pantaloons and an instrument, and he was very much a bard. No, it was probably a lie. He may be, well, maybe then it was definitely a bard. What? Oh, Bards. Uh, hang on, okay? They just... live on lies. Did he say, like, hey, nini, nini, ho, nini, nini, and, like, throw <laughs> flower petals and stuff? How did you know? <laughs> no way he had a beard. Bullshit. <laughs> he did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, come sorry. on, man. I'm sorry. It's just second nature. I, I apologize. <laughs> Tormag is not a liar. Tormag not a bard. <laughs> I mean, they really do say hey, nini, nini, ho, nini, nini. Quite, quite, quite we, often. We yeah. are digressing. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Yeah. I believe you will need the Vorpal Blade to fell the Jabberwock to make your way into the Palace of Heart's Desire if you're going to rescue Zabilna and free Prismere from the clutches of these three hags, the Hourglass Coven. Oh, but you will need two additional <coughs> items to do so. Along the with horn this? in which you hold and the cauldron itself. Oh. Now the horn, the butterflies have told me, has been altered. Will you bring it to me? Of course. She motions her head towards the horn, and you watch as she angles her horn down towards it. And as the light pierces into the, the tip of the horn, it shoots beams of light through Elodin's horn, and you see, created on the grass beneath you, a map of all of Prismere. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> it cool. is as I thought. For you see, the hag's memories are not so great. One of the three forgets most things at the beginning of a new day. None of them would trust the other with keeping the cauldron for their own. So it only stands to reason they would hide it. But with their memories being faulty and not trusting any of the others to keep the secret safe, they would etch it on the horn, a map. You will need to use that to find it. How it works, I cannot tell you, for I do not understand hag magic. But we at least know its purpose and what it can do to get you to where you need to go. It, is the map still on the floor, on the ground? The <laughs> moment she moves her head away and the light from her horn stops shining oh. through it, it oh. disappears. <sighs> Like try to, is there a button like on the <laughs> No, we got a we got an Indiana Jones that bitch. <clears throat> oh wait, hold on. I run off to the shore and I like hold it up across the lake. Oh look, see it lines up perfectly with the Bruins of the Death Star. Somehow they knew <laughs> that it, I would be standing at this exact point and that the horn would have this exact shape. Isn't that fucking crazy? That's untrue. <laughs> I was going to say, no, all, all MacGuffins are far more likely. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. That, that's, that is untrue. No, I don't do any of that. 
So, so, so we'll figure out how to use this then, and this will tell us how to get to the cauldron. That is the hope. Though nothing when dealing with these hags is going to be foolproof. And you are four, five fools standing in front of me now. Yeah, stands to reason. Well, you know what they say about fools. They are wiser than you expect. I've never heard that before. And they can make a living through their flatulence alone. <laughs> Ow! She, oh, she cool looks back. at you very quizzically, um, and then continues to look towards you, Kremi. How the cauldron is used, that is another matter altogether. The hags can work it because they are hags in, by their very nature. Yep. But you will need to find someone to help you. Somewhere in Prismere is a warlock. A warlock whose patron is Baba Yaga. <gasps> it is through her that you will be able to learn more about the cauldron, but you will have to gain her favor. Do you happen to know where she is? I do not. All right. Uh, have I ever heard of Baba Yaga before? Roll a history check. Out on. <laughs> I love how all of us are like, <gasps> I mean, that may be the event. That may be something to me. I mean, who? Dormek is going to be very honest. Dormek gasped because everyone else gasped. Dormek has no clue what's happening. You know, Baba Yaga is a great song by The Y. Oh, I get it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, I got a 20. You, you have heard of Baba Yaga. In Ogwe, um, you know that there were people who would turn away from the Loa, but would look towards um, Baba Yaga and head out into the swamp for different reasons. Wait, are you talking about... Wait, I've heard that name before. Yeah. Faint stories in the Whippawalo Swamp about folks who call upon her or say she lurks amongst the trees. She's fucking real? Of course she is real. I apologize for my language. Please, (laughs) what's your language? (laughs) I'm earmuffing you. I'm sorry. And so what you're saying is that this warlock that worships Baba Yaga She'll be able to tell us how to use this. No, how to use the cauldron. So we gotta find out how to get the map from the horn. Okay. Then we'll use the map okay. to get the cauldron. Okay. I mean, never mind. <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> I mean, then, si- silence. Once we get the cauldron, then we find the warlock. Okay. And then the warlock will tell us how to use the cauldron. And then we somehow find the Vorpal Sword. And then we kill the Jabberwock with the Vulpal Sword. Wait, 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 where does all of this go on our current list of things to do? Well, this is going to the top. Everything else, I uh, go straight to the bottom. Uh, we, all, we made so many promises to so many people. Torben can't remember them all. He's getting the nervous sweats. Who cares about that horse lady? I really don't. I mean, you guys? No, well, not really. Who? <laughs> exactly. Torbeck doesn't even know. And you don't even remember that. Horses were in front of us. Oh, horses and no, no, not you, not you. There was a horse lady. Remember at the carnival? She was like, oh, she was a centaur. No, oh, Torbeck oh. must have just missed it. <laughs> and then, oh yeah. And then there was like Curly's cousin. No, Burley's cousin. Curly. Uh, Curly. Yeah. Curly. Curly. Yeah. Well, those guys kidnapped Torbeck, you know. If so Torbeck like, had shown up to the carnival on time and gotten a proper job, none of this would have ever happened. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's the one that we met right after Gideon started getting haunted by Chuckles. Oh, what? yeah. That's right. Oh, uh, was that right after? That was right after. What if that was like Chuckles in disguise? Oh, God. I guess he's dead. I hate that yeah, clown. He's dead. Anyways, look, anyways, I think we got the plan. Unless there's more you can tell us. 
Really? That's There is only one other thing that may be helpful. On the second floor of the Palace of Heart's Desire is a room. A room that Zabilna treasured above all others. It's where she kept her tomes of the most ancient knowledge. If, by the time you make it to the palace, there is anything that you are unsure of, it is in this room you will find the answers. Like anything? Zabilna was kind, but she was also secretive. Mm. This room was her most precious place. If there is something Zabilna knew, it would be documented in this room. Mm. But to get in, we have to kill the Jabberwock. Mm. It is true. There is no way to access the gates of the palace without slaying the beast. Ah. Uh, all right, now, we'll figure that out. I think we'll leave that up to the King of Hearts, hopefully. You need to travel to Yon. Okay. There is someone who can help you. An oil can named Squirt. <laughs> Some water. Oh, it hit star. I'm fine. What? <laughs> what do you find so comical? I'm, I'm laughing at Green Coat. <laughs> Get in! What? You man? do? <laughs> Listen! Little Green! Come on, man! There's no end in Green Coat! There's no D in Avengers <laughs> and there's no end in Green Coat! Guys, keep it together! It's just, it's just squirt, man, and it got me. Yeah. Also, I thought you were like, oh, I'm a mechanic. That's a little bit of mechanics here, man. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh solo brow, Gideon. I'm disappointed in you. Oh, I'm sorry. There uh, is an oil can named Squirt. All right. You can find him at Little Oak. Little Oak, okay. With a getaway gang. He's got a whole gang? Well... Oh. Yes. All right. The band of misfit children that Will of the Feywild has rescued from Granny Nightshade. Oh, the fella on the water posters. Yes. All right. Little Oak is a treant. Oh. They have found their home in the boughs of his tree. Oh. It is there that the getaway gang plans to rescue the rest of the children from Granny Nightshade's workshops. And it is also there that Squirt has found a home. Now I do know, as my butterflies have told, that Squirt is out of commission when it comes to traveling. He is one of very few that can travel between the different realms of the different areas of Prismere, but he can only do so when his oil can is filled with boggle oil and his stores have been depleted. And as everyone in Thither knows, the only place to find boggles and their oil is Loom Lurch with Granny Nightshade. And that's in Yarn. No. Uh, we yeah. saw Loom Lurch. That is that here in Thither. Oh, you saw Loom Lurch. It told us about it. Loom oh, yeah, Lurch. I know all about Loom Lurch. Loom Lurch is the downed oak tree rotting in the middle of the forest no, that Granny that. Nightshade calls her home. All right. Now... My suggestion is that you take one of my butterflies and let them guide you to Little Oak. You befriend Will of the Feywild in the Getaway Gang. And in doing so, get their permission to take Squirt along with you. You will have to help him refill his oil reservoir, but once doing so, you will be able to freely move into Yon. Whatever tasks you need to do in thither before then, I would suggest you do them. Before or after we follow your, your, your butterfly? Your next stop should be Little Oak in the yeah. getaway game. Okay, that's what I was... Yeah, we were confirming. I was confirming. gonna... If you hadn't mentioned Will of the Feywild, I was waiting for the right opportunity to inquire, because I believe he was next on our list to find out. To yeah. see if he's running some sort of underground rebellion. I would be careful 
with Will of the Feywild. Oh. He is not quite what he seems. Do you know why he's wanted? Why the reward is so, at least at face value, uh, generous? Granny Nightshade hates children. Despises them. Uh. Oh yeah, we know. She steals children from the mortal realms and brings them here in their nightmares and in their waking nightmares. And she puts them to work in her workshop making horrific toys. So, she just wants them because he's a kid. He steals the children from her and adds them to the getaway gang. Oh, He's gotcha. liberating kids, man, from I her mean, weird child toy prison. So we shouldn't turn a man for, like, eternal life or whatever it was? <gasps> so I guess that is your choice to make. Well, no, no, I mean, I, I didn't realize he had such a noble cause. The poster man had to look like a jacket. Oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> can, <laughs> can you please watch your language? Come here. He's really trying. He's, he's trying very he's trying hard. Trying it would be so, so much worse if he wasn't promises. trying. Oh. Do you guys think Will's full name is William Walk? What? William Walk. Of, uh, like, T. Of like the Bill Walk? Yeah, but William. <laughs> well, we could go by Bill. I mean, nothing stopping them. Maybe. I mean, I, I mean Torbett's just thinking out loud. <laughs> well, why would his last name be that, I guess, is my question. It's another thing you can find in a kitchen that doesn't, isn't a pan. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> What the hell? I am missing something, uh, I like your Peter Pan reference. Okay. <laughs> Torbeck, I'll just give it up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I frankly... That you were, you were trying really hard. Uh, I appreciate wait, it. <laughs> it's okay. I prefer if he was called Bill Dutch Oven. <laughs> Torbeck was also going to go with William Waffle Iron. <laughs> but a walk is actually a pair. <laughs> you know, it's one syllable. It kind of works. There used to be uh, a guy uh, who would come into Uncle Globo's shop who apparently he moonlit. His name was uh, Bill Dutch Oven. <laughs> <laughs> they never caught him. They never caught him. Willie Whisk, Bill Skillet. Uh, uh, <laughs> they never, never, never got him from at least for oh, what man. I heard. Well, I'm glad the DM got your reference. Because the three of us like, someone's going to get it eventually. Oh, you know, it's okay. Uh, it's just uh, back things. Uh, it's oh, well, what have I missed? Uh, never Stop mind. It. <laughs> you're done. You're done. Oh, you, you, I, do oh, squirt. <laughs> you, you, you do it. You do it one more time, and your name will be canonically Grinko. <laughs> No! <laughs> Your name will permanently be changed to Green. <laughs> so we, we gotta find Squirt and he just walks around. What did I say? You no, do it no, one more no, time? No, 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 I do it. I do his voice. Okay, that's it. Uh, <coughs> oh, Alright, okay, well, then the next stop, we'll follow the butterfly to Will Walk. And uh, take it from there. It's William. William Walk. <laughs> but remember, we have to be careful because he's not what he seems. Well, that could be propaganda. Do we think his name? Wait, who told us that? That's Lamorne. You just said that. that. Uh, 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 <laughs> sorry, Dorbeck was still really worried about his horrible flop joke. <laughs> <laughs> He was so sure that Mr. Krabby would know what Torbeck was talking about. He's pretty sharp about this. I thing. feel like if Frost were here, Torbeck misses him. Frost would have gotten it. Yeah, he's had the shits for at least uh, a day or two. Yeah, right? I feel like Frosty would probably Please right watch now. Watch your language. I'm sorry, I'm really Frosty, proud. I feel like would have said, "Hey, that's pretty funny." Uh, yeah. But yeah. unfortunately, my name is Grinko, not Grinko, so <laughs> he will not say that. To that's you. okay. Frosty, you doing okay? You need some Pedialyte? <laughs> what part of stop talking to Frost? Your name's gonna be Gringo, oh, don't oh, you understand? Oh, right, no reference. Oh, okay. No more referencing oh, Frost. Oh. Who? <laughs> 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 Our poor
Marty's always been four. I don't even remember. <laughs> he oh, it's guys nice. Guys nice. Guys nice. Guys nice. Guys nice. Guys nice. Is standing there with you. He doesn't have the shits. He's just deep oh. in thought. Uh, and will be this. for the next uh, three uh, hours. Okay. So, can we leave immediately? If that is your wish, you can. Oh, do well, you? You don't deal in gold, and I know you're not a fey wild creature, or a fey creature, but we must offer you any trinket of your choice. I have no need of material possessions, but you do. And I see that your hearts are true, and that you really will try to reunite that horn with Elodin. And I so, I give you these two things. Do you have a vial? On you. I got a schmason job too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a vial on you? Hey, Frost. <laughs> you take a vial from Frost. <laughs> I know he's got vials. I take a vial from Frost. Frost. Show me Elidin's horn, please. Immediately, you watch as two large tears begin to roll down her cheek. Take them. <gasps> oh, oh. And I will. Collect the tears. You watch as one, two, three teardrops drop into the vial before you're able to cork it. What I is so? Nothing. No, we can't. No. I can't. Sit, on. I can't sit across from him anymore. I cork the vial. What's going on? No, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Something happened at work earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. How is this at work? <laughs> this has magical properties. They're unicorn tears. So yes. And lastly, you may pluck one single hair from my mane. Oh. Only one. Are you sure? I mean, I don't want to like hurt you. Would you like me to change my mind? No, 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 no. I mean, I'm just. It just seems, you know, a little violent. But I'm happy to, if you don't mind. I'll just, uh, I'll just take a little short one here. here we go. None of the hairs are short. And you take a long, a beautiful pearlescent strand of white hair. And it you can feel the magic thrumming through this Jeez. strand of hair. And <laughs> Frost, can I get another please? Thank you. I'll put it in the second file and I'll pork it. And with that, let your the next leg of your journey begin. And if I do see you again, it will be with my thanks. And both you and Elidon will be thanking us. I realize now that sounds very bad. <laughs> <laughs> what the Why are you threatening her? You will be in a beautiful time with your husband, husband, <laughs> and everyone will be happy. We swear it on our lives, especially Torbex. <laughs> or we'll die to the Jabberwock, either way. She bows to you. It is a strange sight to see such an elegant and beautiful creature bow to you in this way. But she does, though her eyes never, uh, never leave yours. She still keeps her head tilted up to watch you. And she slowly backs towards the ruins and then lowers herself onto the soft floral bed where you know that she, um, she has made her home. With a soft whistle, which doesn't sound like it could come from the mouth of a unicorn, you immediately see a veritable swarm of butterflies fly up out of the tree line. And they all swirl around and dance. You hear the sounds of singing, um, voices in common all of it meshing together, creating a cacophony until eventually one singular butterfly alofts down and um, flies directly in front of your face, Crummy. Beautiful colors of purples and blue. His head is fluffy, his antenna bouncing. He is wearing fluffy pants and he has a great beard. You see a tiny liar strapped to his back. <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> That's a warrior if I've ever seen one. That's a warrior butterfly. Look at that! 
he looks towards you, and while still floating in the air, he lets out a, uh, or he um, folds into a gentle bow, and and he says, "Let us away, gentlemen. We are heading to Little Oak to meet the one and only Will of the Feywild." Nice to meet you, Butterfly. What's your name? Uh, he looks towards you, and um, he pulls out his lyre, and what? <laughs> no, 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 sorry. Something funny happened to Warfield earlier. We'll tell you later. You guys are the worst. That's true. Uh, he looks. He looks back. Uh, he looks out at you, and he bows towards you, and he pulls out his lyre. They told me you had been to her and mentioned me to him. She gave me a good character, but said I could not swim. And then he laughs and flutters away a little bit in front of you and then waves his hand as if to follow. Oh, this is going to be so fun! <laughs> oh, it really is a bod. Oh, I thought it was just a handsome warrior. I was wondering why he was rhyming so much. <laughs> With a beard like that, well, there's no, no way he's a bard. Hold on, the jury's still out. He still hasn't said it ain't any own in it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm playing, like, I'm playing all the tunes. I'm a musician and I'm a druid. So As not- you say, hey, ninny, ho, ninny, he quickly darts back and lands upon your head. He uh, begins to do a ooh. jig as he says, he sent them word I had not gone. We know it to be true. If she should push the matter on, what would become of you? Quit speaking of riddles. <laughs> should, we just, should we just follow you? What the hell well, is this oh, guy? Just, should we, we should follow you to the lovely tree, right? I gave her one, they gave him two. You gave us three or more. They all returned from him to you, though they were mine before. And then he alights up into the air and begins to fly. All right, Mia, it's been a pleasure. I'll save Jeff, I promise. <laughs> Ella doing. You really gonna insult her like that before you leave? Oh, I'm just referencing no. the last you She's a person, that. she's a person. Mia Farrow and Jeff. Yeah, Davis I know, together. you're talking about the voice actor. I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, I know your name. Lamorna, thank you so much for the help. We were wayward souls, and now we have purpose and vision and direction. And we didn't have to make a deal with any bad people. I see, this is an absolute win. It really is. It's we just have, good. We gotta find a way to use the map before we restore the horn to uh, Elador. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, it's in the next zone over. I guess we got time. You're right. Yeah. Order of operations. Farewell. If we need to reach you, do you have some sort of magical... She has already stopped talking to you. <laughs> she has been laying um, in her bed, and it oh, is as if you no mess. longer exist. She looks so comfy. Uh. Well, goodbye, farewell. Lead away, noble butterfly. butterfly. Love what you do with the place. <laughs> and he flies. And as he does, he recites poems and songs, and uh, any time you attempt to speak to him, it is a different poem or a different song or a different dance or a different tune that he plays for you. None of the things that he ever says make much sense at all, though sometimes what he says sounds like it could be in response, but for the most part, it is all whimsy and it is all, um, and it is all madness but he continues to lead you about until eventually you find yourselves at a crossroad. You've been traveling, I would say an hour, maybe two at this point, traveling along um, what are some rough hewn roads through this ancient forest. And you have taken many turns and you've come to many forks and the butterfly has always led you on in his sing song voice with his happy little jig. He has led you forward until you find yourself at this crossroads. And it is here that the butterfly spins off into the air and he strums gently on his lyre as he looks towards the path. um, He looks towards the paths in front of you, one forward and then one to the right and one to the left. And he looks between all of you as if waiting for you to make a choice. Uh, what should we do? 
Yeah, is there like a poem for this? You asking him to, to do a poem? Yeah. Which path you take, oh noble butterfly? McCavity's a ginger cat. He's very tall and thin. You would know him if you saw him, for his eyes are sunken in. His brow is deeply lined with thought, his head is highly domed. His coat is dusty from neglect, his whiskers are uncombed. Oh. He sways his head from side to side with movements like a snake, and when you think he's half asleep, he's always wide awake. Oh, the answer's left. Oh. oh, well done, Tobek. Let's go. Let's well done, Tobek. I didn't right. understand any of that. Oh, Tobek just knows sometimes. Yeah, I thought he was just talking about cats. Play some jaunty traveling music, will you? You make to turn towards the left. Yeah. As you do. Oft in the silence of the night, when the lonely moon rides high, when wintry winds are whistling and we hear the owl's shrill, shrill cry, in the quiet, dusty chamber by the flickering firelight, rising up between two sleepers, comes a spirit all in white. Oh, wait, hold on. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the matter, guys? That's not ominous at all. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. I mean, what did he say? We ain't afraid of no ghosts. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I feel like left now is spooky ghosts. <laughs> what do you gather for that, <laughs> Tolbeck? What? Ma- you you say McCavity is left? Yeah, it's obvious. You guys didn't hear it? Well, no, well I just assumed that you figured out whatever fucking riddle he was speaking. Wait, that was a riddle? Oh, I don't know. We <laughs> trusted I mean, you, Torbeck. That makes what? sense of anything he said. Yeah, no, Torbeck didn't know what he was saying either. Torbeck just knows we're supposed to go left. All right. Um, Mr. McCavity, whatever your name is. <laughs> McCavity's the cat. Oh. Uh, is there a spooky ghost this way? He looks to you, and you see a look of horror on his face for a second. My mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. Oh, now Dormac thinks we're supposed to go right. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like the undead. <laughs> if, I'm being, if I'm being honest. Oh, Dormac is very sure we're supposed oh. to go right. All right, we'll go right then. This way, good butterfly. As you make your way towards the right, <laughs> he begins to read. Oh, no. Or he begins to say... <laughs> <laughs> the broad-backed hippopotamus rests on his belly in the mud. Although he seems so firm to us, he's merely flesh and blood. Flesh and blood is weak and frail, susceptible to nervous shock. While the true... And then he stops speaking. The true what? You feeling all right? While the true... Well, it's all right. Sounds like this way is just a hippopotamus. <laughs> <laughs> I think a hippo was a spooky ghost. Wait, 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 wait. Do you guys have any idea how dangerous hippopotamuses are? <laughs> they're <laughs> harmless. We gotta go with the ghosts. <laughs> no, they're very You can friendly. also move forward. A full-grown hippopotamus will tear a man to shreds instantly. No way. No. Yes way. way. I could take a full grown hippopotamus. Yeah. Oh, you could no, definitely take no, a full grown you hippopotamus. Yeah, really like, couldn't, Gideon. Yes, yeah. I could, no, man. I don't think you can. Well, now I want to go this way just for principle. <laughs> Why are you right? talking? There's only one kind of bad hippopotamus, and it's a purplish pinkish hippopotamus from the second level of the Lion King game for the SNES. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that hippo. All of the hippos are cool, Torbeck. Uh, We're going right. Oh, uh, well, Torbeck is <laughs> being <laughs> outvoted. Just don't say Torbeck didn't tell you so. I mean, like he said, hippos are just flesh and blood. So if it causes problems, we just kill it. Torbeck's gonna think that everyone's gonna wish we went with the ghost. Fine. Do you want to hear what the middle road we should, poem we should is? Hear and, then the we go, and then we go right. Fine. I mean, that middle might be the cat, though. Wow. No, left was the ca- Oh. No, left yeah. was the spooky ghost. Well, left was the spooky ghost. Right is very charming hippopotamus. 
We'll, we'll hear him out. <laughs> what was, it? was the middle of the cat? Mm-hmm. Was the middle of the cat? No. Uh, oh. Speaking nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> the cat the was crooked. Cat, cr- 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 <laughs> <laughs> cat was the crossroads. The cat was the clue to go left, and we thought about it, and then we're like, "Oh no, it definitely means right." Then we heard about the unbelievably dangerous hippopotamus, so uh, now we're trying the middle. Okay, so we have, and then we have. All the while, the butterfly dances to the tunes of your song, but you are making a motion to move towards the middle. Yeah, just to check. Just and to see as what you happens. do, he begins to say, The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright. And this was odd because it was the middle of the night. The moon was shining sulkily because she thought the sun had got no business to be there after the day was done. It's very rude of him, he said, to come and spoil the fun. Wow. I mean, that seems pretty innocuous. This path is, like, sunny. Dormac doesn't know what that means, but Dormac agrees. Oh, I think it's about a ship at sea, billowing the sails at night. Sailing at night time. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Oh, like, like two ships passing in a night. Yeah, I guess. I mean, what's the theme song of this one? Well, that was pleasant. Oh, he's not done. I kind of like this one. (laughs) (laughs) And then there's going to be a bunch of angels who are actually aliens. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Jordan Quartz Metal. Do you say angels and aliens? You think that yeah. aliens are easier to deal with than one hippopotamus? Oh, uh, absolutely. Oh, oh, we got man. spooky ghosts, we got angel aliens, and we got a, some hungry, hungry hippo. Well, you know, I saw that movie. That movie fucking sucked. Angels Why? angels and aliens? Angels versus aliens? <laughs> with Harrison Ford. Who? <laughs> 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 Directed by John Favreau. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> oh, it's terrible. I think we go right. I like the charming. It sounds like a very fun, like. Uh, boo, 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 situation like a fun watering hole. Oh, like yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the second level of the uh, yeah. SNES Lion King game. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shit. Well, again. The butterfly begins to speak oh, again. Uh-oh. The sea was wet as wet could be. The sands were dry as dry. You could not see a cloud because no cloud was in the sky. No birds were flying overhead. There were no birds to fly. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They wept like anything to see such quantities of sand. If this were only cleared away, they said, it would be grand. Oh, man, that sounds pretty cool. Walruses are kind of fun. Yeah, I love walruses. They're one of my favorite animals. And they're not nearly as dangerous as hippopotamuses. But if there's a whole bunch of sand this way, you know how hard that is on gears? (laughs) It's terrible for gears, I'll tell you, if you don't know. It gets in everything. He's got a good point. I mean, we should probably avoid the sand if we can help it. Okay. Listen, if you want to go the sand route, I'm just saying. I'm not moving any sand. And I'm not sitting down either. Do you hate sand? You just, I don't hate it. You just, you know, there are better places to be. Is it coarse and harsh and gets everywhere? (laughs) Yes! Ah, okay. It's coarse and harsh. It gets everywhere. It gets in everywhere. And you're just never comfortable. How do you feel about week? younglings, Gideon? I'll stand in between <laughs> Gideon and Hootsie. Uh, well, okay, I like. Oh, I, get I vote either walrus or hippo. Path. Nothing with spooky ghosts or zombies or some strange cat okay. named McCavity. Nine out of ten dentists would say we should not go on that path. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. good. That's pretty good. Oh, no, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's that's pretty good. good. Oh, no! no! <laughs> Funny enough, all of a sudden you all look at Grinko. And you realize that his name is a permanently name tag changed. name erupts on his chest. No, none of you remember him ever being called anything but Grinko Grimgrin. Uh, oh, I love living in the world of adventures. <laughs> uh, anyway, 
if we want to go where Hippopotamus is, then so be it. Last warning! Okay, let's take a vote! A full-grown hippopotamus makes the Elden Beans of Virginian sales look like a cakewalk. I mean, I've never heard that, but have you, have you ever seen a hippopotamus, Torbeck? Yes. <laughs> Why would you think Torbeck <laughs> hasn't seen a hippopotamus? Oh, I don't know. The have butterfly you... begins to speak. <laughs> If seven maids with seven mops swept it for half a year, do you suppose, the walrus said, that they could get it clear? I doubt it, said the carpenter, and shed a bitter tear. O oh, oysters, come and walk with us, the walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk, along the briny beach. We cannot do with more than four to give a hand to each. And that's for the forward path, still? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're still standing there, so... Wow. Let's go back to the hippo path. Maybe he'll finish this rhyme. Huh? Huh? <laughs> okay, let's take a vote. We are guessing left to spooky ghosts and zombies yep. and ghouls and ghasts and shades. Geists. Wait, are you raising your hand for that fucking path? Yeah! Put your fucking hand down. We're not going down. That's not going down. Forward is the sea. That there sounds pleasant. Is it's sand. sand. Two votes. He also votes metal. We each have one vote. Uh, That's how so, democracy works. So you're standing over by the right path. Yes. Right yes. now. Yeah. The hip hop apart on this path. Forward is, is the beach, a walrus, oysters. Brine. Lots of sand. Oh, some cocktail sauce, maybe. Hold on. Some pina coladas. Some, some, a little, a little <laughs> bit of adultery. <laughs> There's refreshments. I mean, I could be coming around. If Tormax vote for initial vote doesn't get enough votes to even have a chance of winning, Torbex vote should be transferred to his second favorite <laughs> bank, which is the beach. He begins right? to speak. Oh. Right. Oh. <laughs> He's outwardly respectable. They say he cheats at cards, and his footprints are not found in any file of Scotland Yards. And when the larder's looted, or the jewel case is rifled, or when the milk is missing, or another peak's been stifled, or the greenhouse glass is broken and the trellis past repair, I there's the wonder of the thing. McCavity's not there. Oh, this is the fucking... The hippo is the same thing as the cat? <laughs> oh... Well, that's a lot less interesting. That's a lot less interesting. Especially if Scott was going to be there. Yeah. Yeah, no, thought, Scott Land's Scott. yard. I thought Scotland was a district of Galtica. Uh, no, it's like a it's like a, a discount warehouse owned by some guy named Scott. <laughs> <laughs> oh, makes sense. Yeah, it's like yard furniture. That's why it's Scotland Yard. All right. I vote for angels and aliens. Yeah, me too. Well, it sounds pretty cool. Is that the beach? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Dormac also Ooh. votes for the beach. So are you going right, straight. left, straight. or straight? straight. Walrus Town. I thought that day was angels, but to my surprise, I climbed aboard their starship. We're headed for the skies. And I like this <laughs> The butterfly begins to speak. Come say. The walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so, and then they rested on a rock, conveniently low. And all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot and whether pigs have wings. And as he says the final words, he flies up into the sky and disappears. And you are left alone on the forward path, and as you look behind you, you see... The crossroads are gone, as if they had never been there before. It is just a singular path that stretches on for miles behind you. Oh, God, do we fuck up? Oh, uh, well, maybe. Either way, Dorvek's glad that story ended, because he didn't like where it was going. <laughs> oh, do you think that... 
It why, had... why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Do you think <laughs> that this... <laughs> He's blaming Gringo. I didn't murder a family of oysters. That was the fucking you, wait, you, think, you think that that story was going to end in the gaslighting and subsequent massacre of children? <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous! It sounded like it was going that way. I don't know why you would presume that, Torbeck. Uh, Torbeck was having a pretty good day until he heard that story. <laughs> I mean, it's like, oh, hello, oysters, let's go. They just want to walk along the briny beats. What's wrong with that? <laughs> it's a very friendly, neighborly thing to ask, Torbeck. Just getting a bad feeling. I think you just might be a sourpuss today, Torbeck. I feel like you woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. As if you were chased by ghosts and had to watch and smell Frost shitting himself for hours. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, those things and, did happen. And listen to Torbeck. Torbeck didn't want any of that to happen, and all of those things happened. Uh, oh, those ghosts were spooky. Uh, Man, you still yeah. wanted to go down the left path, you fucking idiot. <laughs> we just got rid of ghosts. <laughs> You've never seen a hippopotamus, Mr. Grammy. Uh, uh, yeah, I have. No, you haven't. In a zoo? <laughs> you don't know? You don't know! Now look, they look awfully charming and friendly. Mm. All right? Except that one from the fucking SNES line. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck that hippo. <laughs> Fuck that hippo. <laughs> With shitty monkeys. <laughs> Goddamn oh, ostrich. Ostrich! <laughs> Fuck! Fuck! <laughs> okay! Now what do we do? Well, we have no path but forward. Hopefully, there's some nice beach. There's some nice tropical beverages. And, you know, nice oysters and bread with butter. Mm. <laughs> no children massacre. Hopefully. Yeah, none, 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 of <laughs> none of that. 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 Let's, let's that. establish that right now. Yeah. We are not hoping for any of that. We're going to manifest anything but that. All okay, right. Hootsie, let's go. We're safe. You continue on your walk. It doesn't feel like time passes at all. You walk and walk for hours. And yet, the sun still seems to be held in the same place overhead that it was when you started. The, it was when you entered the, the glade with the unicorn. It's as if time is in a standstill. But you continue to walk, ever watching the forest around you, remembering what it had been like to walk through the forest before you had gotten to Lamorna's Island and how you had been perpetually walking through the same bit of forest over and over and over again. And now that that idea has crossed your mind that that's a thing that can happen here, you look for it and you see that that is not the case here. The trees are ever changing. The forest that you're walking through is not the same as it was an hour ago or an hour prior. And eventually, you hear a sound on the wind, the sounds of sniffling, crying, a pained groan. And you look up ahead and you see that there appears to be a small bit of a clearing, maybe another crossroads or a fork in the road, something at the very least. And that seems to be where that noise is coming from. Uh. Does, does the noise, the sniffling, sound like a crying child? It doesn't. Oh, <gasps> <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I think somebody needs help. They're very sad, it sounds like. We should be careful, though, of any tricks. I think this is like the walrus. No. Oh. Or the carpenter. It's probably the carpenter. What do you think, Torbeck? Torbeck mm, doesn't know. Torbeck still thinks we might have messed up. Told you we should have gone with the spooky ghosts. <laughs> Hello? Do you need help, spooky ghost? Are you a spooky ghost, or are you friendly? Are you walking up to yeah. the clearing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You You say this as you make your way towards this clearing, which... I, it becomes very clear to you is <laughs> a um, <laughs> is uh, a pathway that diverges. Um, this uh, this road clearly continues forward. Um, but you do see that there is a tall wooden sign that has um, two uh, two posts on it. One leading towards the forward path. Something scribbled on it in a potentially. Uh, 
uh, Sylvan, and then the other one pointing down another path uh, leading towards towards the right. Mm -hmm. um, also with a marker indicating what would be down that path. And that catches your eye for an instant, but it is what is on the ground in front of this signpost that draws your attention. It is what looks to be a bundle of woven blankets, shawls, cloaks, all bundled onto the ground and pulsing. And then you hear it, the sniffling and the whimpering, and no. you realize that it is not a bundle of fabrics, but it is an elderly woman who is laying on the ground, tempting wearily and shakily to get to her feet and uh, continually collapsing onto the ground. Uh, you see for a moment a flash of her um, pale wrinkled skin and you see that her ankle is uh, dark, dark purple. Um, and you notice very quickly um, that there is a walking stick um, embedded in the ground, snapped in half. Uh, it appears to have hit some sort of rock and snapped, and she had tumbled. And she is struggling, not even noticing you as she's trying to gain her bearings, as she whimpers and she calls out in pain, um, as she tries to find some way to get to her feet. Help her up, kid. Oh, well, oh, gosh. Excuse me, excuse me, young lady. Do you need a strapping young lad to help you? What happened here? Are you all right? Young lady, who are you talking to, she, old lady? Um, she immediately startles okay. for a moment, and she she looks nice. around, and she fixes the spectacles that are on her face. They're um, overly large, um, and the prescription, if prescriptions were a thing in Evantris, um, would be clearly high as it magnifies her eyes, very similar to Twig, um, as she looks over towards you and oh look at you oh you come to help me oh gosh I, you you sweet little sprout can you please help me up yeah gideon this gideon's a real big strong you, you yeah. strappy lad oh yeah i mean can you even stand up if i lift you up look at that ankle and I'm not going to be able to put much weight on it, that's for sure. Yeah, you look like you got one foot in the grave but and one on think... banana peel. I'm sorry, but it's, what did you say? I said you look like you got one <laughs> foot in the grave and the other on a banana peel. Oh, you sweet little sprout. Oh, well. Uh, just, if you could just help me up. Yeah, okay. And help me get my staff. There you go. I'll find my footing. And right. I can... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll, I will make a banana poultice. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't know you knew that. I either. know that one. <laughs> That's pretty what brings surprising. you out here into the forest on a day like this? This may hurt a little bit. All right. Uh oh. Oh, uh, what, uh, why are you putting this so much pressure on my ankle? This isn't me. This isn't me. I'm trying to help you. Oh, God. Not, 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 not. Ow. Ow. I guess Although you he said it only took on a second to apply. Why are you still massaging her foot? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You take her shoe off and uh, you, you, you take the shoe ankle, off on, on the wrong ankle. on the wrong foot, the one that's not even swollen. Well, we should have the uh, high heel be critical to solving the myth, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, to confirm the identity. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes the best sense narratively for the film. <laughs> Uh, Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Real ones. It's like it's like uh, is it Prince Charming in, in uh, Cinderella? Is that his name? Yeah. Where it's like, oh man, I saw the most beautiful woman. It's like, oh, what did she look like? No, get all of the women in the kingdom. I must look at their feet. <laughs> Yeah. That is the no. Can you like no, get a description? No, no, no. Like, not what did she good. look like? No, no. no, no I think this, we can just find her. There's no other way. There's, you would be executed if you don't bring me all of their feet. There's no other way. Just bring all of the women. <laughs> I am trying to heal her swollen ankle with with bananas. How many are you using? 
Uh, I mean, so oh, I'm you're, not you're asking you a good berry. I'm you're just doing okay, Healy Touch, okay, okay. but I'm just, I'm uh, doing banana okay. flavor. Yeah. Uh, uh, you are going to just playing with it. Jesus Christ. You're sick, fuck. You... You reach down and you help you help her with her ankle. You feel that there's clearly a break here, and <sighs> if left in this way, that the foot will set improperly and she will um, she will struggle to walk going forward. And so you you tell her it's going to it's going to be a little bit painful, but she's oh, not prepared I'm for what you do this. as you set the ankle, and then oh. use your druidic magics to mend the bone. And she yells out in pain. But the sigh of relief that comes next is palpable in the air around you. As she looks down, you can see that the purple swelling is turning to a pink as the ankle is healing in your hands. And I know it may be alarming that I don't have medical supplies and they're just bananas and jungle vines. Magic. <laughs> and there's funky swing music playing. <laughs> but I promise I know what I'm doing. I promise I know what I'm doing. <laughs> And uh, I'll do that, and I'll say, Kitty, put her on a hoot seat. It'll be nice and comfy for okay, her. Okay, here you go. Come on, sit up here, old lady, all right? Come on. Take it's, a load off. It seems Stop. like you uh, broke your walking stick. Let me mend that for you. <laughs> here you are. And you do this. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> how you feeling? I already forgot what her accent sounded like. Blimey! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You helped me with my ankle and I appreciate it so much. Oh. I, what, what are you sprouts doing over here? We're lost. Well, little Auntie Ethel will help you out. You tell me where you're headed and I'll point you in the right direction. We're looking you've, for... You've done me quite the favor here with my ankle. A treant by the name of Little Oak, if you happen to know where he is. Hmm. I don't know a treant by that name, but I do know there's a treant if you keep heading straight forward. And if you're looking to go to Loom Lurch, you can take this path here that I was heading on. Oh. You know if a whole bunch of kids live in that tree? <laughs> she, she looks at you nervously. <laughs> Who's asking? What do you mean, who's asking? <laughs> I just picked you up off the ground. His name's Gideon. What? He's asking. What? Gideon's Gideon's asking. Gideon's asking. We, we, we just scooped you up off the ground. He healed your ankle. Enough with the questions. <laughs> We're looking for school children. <laughs> 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 We're looking. Now leave this in here, Granny. Tell us where the fucking kids are at. <laughs> Or I'll make your other ankle purple. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And what use do you have of the of of any children? I don't really have any use for them. <laughs> I just am looking for We're them. We're trying to help them, all right? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I meant. We know that there's uh, a kid that needs some assistance, and we. I was just trying to do him a favor, and frankly, it's for a side quest. We're just trying to knock it out before we continue with the main plot line. I'm not sure what any of that means, but you helped me out, so I'll tell you I heard children's laughter over that way. The way of the the other treant. I don't know if it had a name. And we just continue down the path this way. You just keep going straight unless you're planning to go to Loom Lurch. And that's that way. No, we got a lot of stuff to do. It's the path do. I'm heading. Okay, well, remember, that way is Loom Lurch, so when we come back, we just make a rot. Frost, put it on the map, will you? Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a map right here in my bag. He does, remember? He drew what I was Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, the path is right here. There we go. We are quite close to Loom Lurch, actually. <laughs> It's the reason. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, anyway. Uh, <sighs> do you need any? Uh, I mean, do you want to come with us? Uh, you, you, can you walk in this state? I'm on my way to Loom Lurch. I've got a favor to ask of Granny Nightshade. I'm hoping she'll help me with 
a problem I found myself in. And it's scary for that. And I uh, don't have many other choices, so I've been walking for a long time. I'm going to head on my way there. And if you happen to find yourself there too, well, I owe you a favor and I plan to pay it. Well, if you don't mind sharing, you say you're out of options. Perhaps there one more option stumbled its way upon you. I'm sorry, what did you just say? Is there a way that we could help you with your problems here on it to go to Scabify? I don't think so. You all look very strong and capable. It's true. Okay. You've got a large owlbear in a carriage, which is pretty neat, and a small owlbear that's helping oh. a few other things. Yeah, Juniper's still here too. But what <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you're, you're very strong, yeah, you're very yeah. tall. I didn't notice you for a moment because you're Hi. slinking through the shadows. Dormag's name is Dormag. You know, it's nice to meet you, and you look like you're capable of something. I am indeed. But what I need, I don't think any of you are capable of fixing. Well, like, what's the problem? Because... What's, what's your problem? <laughs> you gotta leave with words, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm just thinking, like, you know, it just doesn't look like she's gonna have a problem for too much longer, the way things are looking. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You really do have a way with words. Like, you're a poet and you didn't even realize that was the case. I would never be a bard, okay? <laughs> You watch it. That's true. Why not? What's your, what's your problem with bards, Gideon? I'm just saying, man. He's got you know? the beard of a bard. Hey, hey, no. That bard fly was very <laughs> uncharacteristically <laughs> handsome, okay? I don't know what the hell was going on, but he was hyper masculine. <laughs> he was certainly good. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, <sighs> My husband passed away recently. Oh. Oh. We have a small farm. Just deeper into thither. We supply a lot of mushrooms. Oh. Our main crop. And I... I can't run the place without them. And I miss them terribly. And I know I shouldn't go to a rest and ask her to give him back, but he's been my best friend my whole life. And I don't... I don't know how to live in this world without him anymore. So I don't think you can help me. Uh, but I hope so she can. Sorry to hear that. We certainly can't help you with that. No, that's that's out of our wheelhouse. I promise you I wouldn't go if I didn't have to. Are you looking for gold pieces? <laughs> Would that help? Talking about the girls. <laughs> 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 fucking serious. What the hell, Crammy? You give that lady a hundred pieces of curse gold and she's gonna meet her husband way the hell before she gets that. Hey, was he talking of guy? He was a man of few words. <laughs> was he? <laughs> Making a deal with Granny Nightshade, all right? And I wouldn't if I didn't feel like I had to. If I ain't need, got no choice. If you need some help and you're lonely, if you happen to find yourself on the south side of the unicorn pond or lake, whatever, there might be a large pile of 700,000 gold pieces <laughs> that, uh... It's like 350,000 gold 350,000 gold pieces that nobody's using. That's all, that's all I'm saying. It might just be an alternate solution to what you're dealing with, is all. She the way would she me. hobbles over to you using the staff that uh, Frost had mended for her, and she puts her old, wearied hand on your shoulder. You're young. I know that gold... Fuck, I'm going to go into that accent again. <laughs> <laughs> I know that gold... I see, you know you gold. don't stop yeah. talking about gold. <laughs> 
I know you're young. Fuck, I can't do it. <laughs> anyway, she tells you you're young and gold won't matter so much when you get old. And that's what she tells you. <laughs> Gotta right. eat those accents Look, together. Once just, it happens, you can't break it. I just wanted to offer an alternate solution. Totally up to you. It's there, southern side of the wayward pool. Just sitting on the ground. <laughs> Give me that. Oh, uh, uh, and I don't think that there's really any way we could bring him back, it right? Mend my broken heart. Well, no. <laughs> well, because you got me laughing. <laughs> well, now that you bet, now that you bet, nah. <laughs> I told you, away with words, didn't I? <laughs> didn't I? I just had to think about it I just had to think about it for one second. You never know. You never know what inspiration's going to strike. Well, golly, oh, now that you mentioned it. Nah. <laughs> nope. She, nope. for the sake of time and my sanity, <laughs> <laughs> she squeezes all of your shoulders individually, thanks you for the help that you've given, but must be on her way because time is short and she has a very important deal to make, one that she is not taking lightly. But she promises you that as she's traveling along the road, she will think about the choices ahead of her. And if she makes it to Loom Lurch and she has the opportunity to make the deal, she will only do it if she feels like it is the right choice, but she will at least give it thought. She wishes you all luck on your journey, and she hopes that you find the children that you were looking for. We don't have to RP this, but I'll just say in closing, we'll keep an eye out for you in Loom Lurch if we ever make it that way. And we hope she, that she solves all your problems. She squeezes your hand, and she reminds you that you have done her a great service today, and that she is in your debt. I'm glad I was able to fix your walking stick with <laughs> my mind beats. <laughs> Everything is coming up wrong. Well. <laughs> and I help. <laughs> Get back in the fucking chair. Let's go. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's keep going. So it was right. We, that was, we did a nice thing. And we know how to get to Loon Lurch. Tor Tormek hopes she doesn't make any deals. <laughs> you kidding? You see her? She's not making it there. We're in like the friggin' desert, man. You're in a forest. We're in the forest, right? <laughs> She's from the forest. A little bit. She's from the forest. She tripped and snapped her leg in the middle of this freaking crossroads. Yeah. You think she's getting a with, little lurch? With the, 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 the uh, stick that Frosty mended. And with my splint, I feel like she'll make it there just fine. A little bit of... Uh, of jungle swing and, and some magic, some of the primal spirit, she's good as new, right as rain. Mm. <coughs> just knows deep down nothing good can come of making these deals. We're probably horrifically cursed. You know what's gonna happen, right? We're gonna go to Loom Lurch and she's gonna be like, Oh, look, I have this goat, and it's my husband because of some stupid monkey paw thing. Can you please help? No, <coughs> Torbeck doesn't want that to happen. No, it was Pavlona that had the goat. No, it'll that's, be like that's a, what I'm referencing. It'll be like an ox or something. Help her tend the, tend the farmland, you know, like pull some... Ah, oh, man, I could have just offered to make her farm equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, everything about farm equipment. I think she's just lonely and misses her husband, that's all. Oh, well... I don't blame her. Look, I mean, you know, if, if that's all she had, you know, maybe... Even if it is some horrible monkey paw, it'll still be worth it, right? You look I mean, to Gideon and think about what you would do if Gideon... Were to pass away suddenly. You don't have to call me out like that. <laughs> it was a blow. <laughs> uh, oh gosh, I could have offered to like help her grow like different crops that were easier to tend, like tropical fruit. Yeah. Man, there's a lot of things we could have done to offer her. Well, I'm sure we'll see her again. Eh. Did she say mushrooms? Yes. yes. Farm of mushrooms? 
That's huh. like a very Feywild crop. Sounds yeah. like. Yeah. We've only seen mushrooms just the one time, haven't we? I mean, there's have mushrooms all over the place. It's the Feywild. It's mm. kind of like the, the thing here. Mm, okay. Well, look. Look at it this way. <clears throat> right? We sort of encountered a similar situation with Bavlona, didn't we? We asked her to bring Twig back, and it was kind of cursed and monkey-pawed, right? But, you know, it's still kind of like having Twig back. I mean, obviously not right now, but yeah. when we were still in the uh, old uh, downfall. Fuck! <laughs> I should have told her to say from a certain point of view after she made a deal. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> next time. Yeah. Next time. I don't think it works that way, Griffin. Oh, uh, you never know. Well, let's keep going this let's way. Let's continue. There's no way that there's actually a beach in, like, this forest-themed zone, but there's got to be some sort of metaphorical... No, no, there's beaches. What? Haven't you ever seen The Last Unicorn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the big ball. <laughs> Just like one of those. Crabby! Uh, look, I Those up, mushrooms like... in Crabby, Chuck! I thought yeah. I flew Fry out of your brain! <laughs> Fry your brain, Crabby! No, the mushrooms spit in your face and you've been going cuckoo fucking bananas <laughs> ever since. You, you know, y'all can doubt me, but I'm telling you, those those little those little beaches... It's a little beach? Well, there's like a couple of them. It's a little beach that makes you old. No, <laughs> that's a stupid idea. Who oh, yeah, that's an awful idea. Let's keep walking. Yeah. <laughs> you continue to walk. You walk for about 30 minutes before you hear the sound of children's laughter. And as you look, you see that the, the forest is thinning out around you. And a large open field, or not fully open, but um, significantly less dense thicket of trees. And in the very center, standing incredibly tall, towering over the rest of the trees, you see a giant oak. A giant oak that you now know is known as Little Oak. And as you make your way towards it, you feel the shade that it casts around you. It is cool here. The sounds of birds chirping, animals skittering about and playing. It is, there is an air of joyous rebellion And as you continue to look around this place, you see up ahead a small group of children as they flock around the leafy oak tree, their gleeful yelps carrying through the forest. Painted swings dangle from the tree's branches. Nestled in its crown is a ram shackled tree house. And as you get up to it, you bask in its glory for but a moment before a small rapscallion of a boy leaps from the treehouse and slams into the ground in front of you. As he looks up at all of you, he says, Stand down or face my merry hell! And he holds out a little wooden sword. And that's where we'll end the session. Ah. <coughs> oh, man, it actually is Rufio. <laughs> <laughs> Can you take us to William Watt? <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> um, we're not done. We're not no. done. No, thank you for the session, Nick. Thank you. That was yeah. awesome. Yes, yes. That was a lot of fun. And that is our last Once Upon a Witchlight session for six weeks. Six yes. weeks. Whoa! We will not be playing Wait. Witchlight until November. What? Ten right. thousand bits from Ten. Drunken Hobo! Oh, yes. What? Yes. Thank you! Hobo. Thank you! Oh my God. goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Any plans to get any bad dice blast at Gary Gygax's memorial when you come to uh, here to walk uh, Wisconsin for Game Hall? The, how, how far away is that from where we're going? I didn't know that was a thing. thing. Oh, well, I don't know. Is it in Madison? Or is I, don't it in, know. I don't know. Let us know where it is. Let us know. Thank you so much. Because we should bring Derek's Labouche dice. We should. We really like, should. On his, and on his behalf and get them blessed. That is, yeah. That won't matter. Yeah. So we're streaming a ton. It just won't be Witch Light because it's, it's October. It's the month of the Crooked Moon. We are bringing back our old spooky Halloween campaign. Nikki has begged to DM some spooky. Edge of Midnight. We're playing a Curse of Shredania one shot. We have an All Clowns one shot. We have Stardust. We have Icebound. The Hulk Legion one shot. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff going on in October. Exclamation point October for the full calendar. Yes. Uh, so don't go anywhere. If you were saying, "Oh, what should I watch now?" Keep tuning in. We're not going to be. We're not going anywhere. And we're going to be live even more. Watch Edge of Midnight. <clears throat> watch Edge of Midnight. Yeah, get caught up. Um, you still have time. You still have time to get caught There's up. There's only 19 episodes. Yes, and they're relatively bingeable. Yes. Um, um, we are streaming like 50 percent 
of the days at least in October. Oh, it's like when I did the math, it's like over every other day. So it's, o- it's, it's like over 50%. It's like one point, you know what I mean? Like yeah, one yeah, point yeah, something 1. streams per, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Um, so <laughs> tune in. We're going to be streaming a ton. Um, and if you haven't yet, become a VIP of the Crooked Moon. If Ooh. you love these plushies that we've What's been showing off. What's the Crooked off, Moon? Whoa, grab, grab what Kelly. is the Crooked Moon? The Crooked Moon is our upcoming Kickstarter campaign. No Especially way. if you're new, joining us on TikTok. It is our upcoming Kickstarter campaign. It's a folk horror supplement for 5th edition with 13 new subclasses, 13 races, a full adventure module, a campaign setting, uh, 11 massive, 11 epic boss fights with epic boss miniatures. This is a small version of our Wicker Man miniature. So this is small, like a considerably smaller than he's going to be when, yeah. when you receive him. Yeah. Um, a full 78 Cartero deck. We have music by the Blasting Company, the composers of Over the Garden Wall. That's right. These three adorable <laughs> plushies, 11 sets of dice. Holy shit, there's so much more. Uh, 13 so, sets of dice total. Oh, so 13 sets. 11, 11, resin. 11 resin dice, one uh, Labradorite set, and Ooh. one glow-in-the-dark wow. metal set. Um, so become a VIP of the Crooked Moon dot, uh, at the crookedmoon.com and you'll get a Chuckles the Clown enamel pin and a Honk Legion mini expansion when you back our campaign on October 3rd um, at a physical product. And if you back that physical tier or physical product in the first 72 hours of the campaign, you'll get a free set of premium sharp edge metal dice Boom. themed around the Horn King, Boom. Little Not metal. Phil, resin. Re- re- resin. Mm. Premium resin sharp edge dice, but they're free. But they're free, <laughs> as long as you pay for shit. And I very high quality. <laughs> and very high quality. Um, so free to talk. So the crookedmoon.com. <laughs> Good run. I'm gonna call it Rip a Wild Thorn. It says it takes about a week if you're determined. We will give exactly one week now to watch. That's right. So get started watching right. uh, Edge of Midnight. It is one week from today. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. And so it's no. there's Wednesday. It's like Wednesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Next Wednesday. Yeah, something like that. Oh, Next oh, Wednesday we're playing Edge of Midnight. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we launch in less than a week. Five days. It's true. Five oh. days. Ah, um, thank you all for your support. We're not. Don't go anywhere. We're still going to do a vacation chill. We're going to chill and talk yeah. about this actual talk session, about theorize, and talk about favorite questions. moments. Mm. Um, I, don't know I picked up my backpack. <laughs> but anything else before we get no. that? You want right. to thank people? Or did we we, we already did. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to thank <laughs> some folks, and we'll continue to th- uh, thank folks in Advanced and Chill. Uh, with that, let's chill.